came here to talk to you a bit about uh, my perception on the impact of the European uh, health data spaces on collaborative research. Some things have uh, been going for quite a while. Some things are uh, new. Uh, so I will tell you where I think we stand and hope heading to. Uh, so, I mean, starting from a, from a very pragmatic definition. So what is a, a data space? Um, several persons have uh, their own interpretation and will tell you what they think they are. It is a data space. Uh, but people often refrain from telling you exactly what it is. Um, and basically, it is a federated, by definition, a federated and open infrastructure for uh, sovereign data sharing uh, based on common uh, um, policies, rules and standards. And I took this from uh, um, uh, actually a white paper uh, on what is a data space from the Gaia X guys, um, which is, has some interesting uh, uh, definitions. Another one is what is data sharing? Um, so, so data sharing can have the, the form of uh, transferring data, uh, which is then available to both partners uh, where this change has taken place, or it can take the form of accessing to data uh, in a limited time, content, and scope. So it does not always mean that you are transferring data, although maybe ultimately that's what you want to do. Um, so I'm now going a bit uh, jumping to, to, to what's happening in the context of um, one of the possible implementations of uh, uh, data spaces, which is what is happening with, uh, in the GAIAX. So GAIAX has uh, very, and the others too, uh, I think these are the ones that are most uh, advanced, so, so I, will, I will refer to them. Uh, we have been become engaged with the, with this with this uh, group and have been following uh, all the technical developments uh, in the scope of of GAIAX. and it starts to be with it starts with a with a formal specification with uh, exact specifications on 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 software um, so it's uh, rather strict um, and uh, and then from this, uh, I will refrain from going into very much technical details, but there is a framework that starts with specifications and ends with uh, compliance. So there are these clearing houses that will stamp your software is compliant or not. Um, so this is um, rather um, strict and rigorous. Uh, so you cannot then say, oh, okay, I'm compliant and you're not. Uh, so, so, so this is, uh, and if you look at these, these are uh, the the softwares that the software uh, packages that are available. And I mean, it's uh, clearly an ongoing progress. So some things work in one versions and don't work with another. And I mean, it is an ongoing uh, effort. And if you see the part where it connects to the data is here, and in this version it, it's it's not uh, working with the other with the other ones, um, but but it it has some data connectors. All this is to manage federation. Okay, so basically, if you have a federation, you have several computer nodes. One one could be sitting here at uh, IARC, other could be sitting at uh, other partner from IARC. I mean, this is uh, a mean and where they are deployed um, it could all be in the cloud as long as you are managing your own uh, space. So I, I'm not going to into where this is going is this is going to be deployed. OK, it is more on whose responsibility is to to handle it. Uh, so you see, there is a lot of uh, going on in here in compliance, here in federation, and for data exchange, it is 
kind of uh, progressing now with this uh, Eclipse data connectors, for example. Um, so <clears throat> if you go on to a demonstration of what is a minimal portable, which is uh, GAIAX compliant, you will find, for example, this one. Um, and the this is pretty much a catalog, but it is a catalog of catalogs. And the thing is, if you go to an individual one, then you say it says go to portal. So this is kind of only very, very minimal integration. So it, it's not suitable to support uh, to support research. Um, and we have uh, in, in previous projects, I mean, I could talk you, to, to you about several initiatives. I, I chose this one because it is a past project in which uh, Everplan was also uh, involved. And it is a, a network in this, uh, this one of um, uh, birth cohorts. So basically, uh, it is interesting for this scope because you cannot say, oh, I don't know who these people are. It's not anonymous, I mean, a pet is anonymized, but you have been following these people for 30 years, in some cases more. Uh, so it is in, uh, an interesting case to learn from. Um, and, uh, and I think we have uh, progressed uh, in, the, in how to support uh, researchers in this, in this network. So since it is a, fener a federation, basically each node has all that it needs to operate uh, as, uh, by its own. So it has a, repos a data repository. It has a, a, a catalog. It has uh, searching mechanisms. And it has authentications and um, other mechanisms for, for security. Um, these guys, which we called Research Coordination Portal, um, also have all the same functionalities, but we chose only to use the catalog part. And it's replicating part uh, what the, this institution or these guys want from their own catalog. And then pretty much everything here is done with, without data, but it connects to data there, uh, making uh, uh, through summaries. So um, I would very much advocate uh, in favor of having an European health data spaces uh, case or use case for research. Um, it is really, really important to understand the impact and to experiment the impact of these technologies, such as I, what I mentioned before. Uh, again, it could be GAIA-X or others, uh, uh, into what the researchers need to support their activity. And what they need goes a lot beyond trust. So if, if you go back here, this will solve trust. This will solve telling who you are and basically accounting for your actions, which is, which, is, which is good. So it's a good foundation. But I mean, you are all re researchers, uh, uh, me too. And would you be happy with only that to support your activity? What, what, what you need is far more than that. You need to find uh, um, the study that has this variable collected in that way. For example, uh, so in the, in doing this um, this uh, use case and using this technology that, uh, as far I understand and as far as my team has been involved in these efforts, uh, are um, I mean are far from from the maturity needed to support research, but I mean there is some some time to adapt, I guess. Uh, what would be interesting is first handling curated data. So this is importing data and gathering data from uh, all the common uh, 
formats and uh, proveniences uh, and classifying it according to well-established but multiple ontology. In this case, uh, there was already some ontologies on the software that we use uh, 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 pertaining to to where these this, uh, this, uh, uh, data sets came from and to whom they, they related. This was about uh, children born preterm, so it could have been the children itself, the mother or the father, for example, uh, how they were collected. Uh, so the, the description of the, of the procedures. So all this is important to, to, to understand the relevance of, of these variables. Uh, and then finding uh, through, I call it metadata, uh, which is um, descriptions about the study design and whatnot. But the thing is, it cannot stop here. This is very pretty and it tells you uh, a lot of important things about each of the studies and the follow-ups of these studies and the study design, all very important, but if you, you don't do much with this. So you need to go beyond that. Uh, and um, the good news is that we could make it to this part without anyone sharing a single line of data. So this is based on data dictionaries and so the definition of each variable, the variable types, how the the new, uh, the missing variables were encoding, all all this information that it's more or less easy to describe, uh, and of course uh, this team uh, also uh, did their own uh, ontology, their own classification, or uh, because there are I don't remember the number, but I think it was close to. 300 instruments that have been used in all these in all these uh, 24 studies and uh, uh, thousands uh, um, of, of, of variables collected so you need a way to to find them and this is this was quite a quite a lot of work uh, and what do you get um, from uh, being able to access data when then you can click on that variable. And if there is data uh, on one of the nodes, uh, on the federated nodes, if data has been uploaded, then you get ag an aggregate vision of how this variable's distribution is, for example. Uh, so, and, and of course, the goal was not just to have a catalog, was to support analysis. So. I mean, we could start an analysis for from the, that research coordination portal. I, I, there is central node there, but there is really not a central point in a federation. It is convenient to have a central entry point to, to find uh, data, but for, I mean, a specific study on, um, I don't know, development, uh, this node can be the central node. Uh, it can request data access to, to the others, it can uh, request to access to this or that data set and conduct and be the leading partner for this analysis. So this is, this is something that, that uh, was also uh, enabled. And for this analysis, and it was, I mean, since recap, it was a lot about uh, harmonizing this uh, uh, cohort studies, which were 24 cohort studies. Uh, um, so a lot was about starting with uh, with uh, an original data set, which is uh, has its, its own data dictionary, and say, but now we want to harmonize to this derivative data dictionary. So it is pretty much mapping data dictionaries and documenting the transformations. So, and we did document the transformations for for each variable, and it allows you to 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 do that. Um, and um, in some cases, I mean, in the simple cases, you can just put a bit of script there and say, okay, this variable was obtained from that variable uh, with this script. Uh, but in other cases, you may need more than that as you progress and do more complicated uh, analysis and use, for example, machine learning. 
Um, you could, I mean, yesterday, Hopsworks was, was presented. It could be a way of not only uh, making the analysis run, but also from preserving the computational environment where it happens. So that tomorrow or in a month or in a year, I can replicate what happened from the collected data, from the, well, collected, but duly curated data uh, that, that I collected for my study to the, the needed transformations that happens for me to publish this paper. So this is uh, uh, what, in, in my opinion, needs to, to be done. And, and I'm sure there is a lot uh, missing here. Uh, and then you can, in, 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 for the results of this, in the, the previous case, harmonization studies, or for each of the variables, you can just click and see, for example, distributions. Now, it is not uh, a, a, a traditional, so this is a KNN-based uh, histogram. So we can say, okay, we don't allow uh, outputs with less than, for example, five or 10 uh, subjects. Uh, and we can do this for the collected data and for the uh, processed or harmonized data. Again, to do this, I don't think we need yet the trust. If after uh, consulting this data and, and these distributions, I realize, well, I do need your uh, raw data, then, then we have trust. And then we need uh, to know who is downloading it and for what. Uh, so this is, I think, I think we need to kind of handle and do the, the best of, of these situations. And I, and in my view, you can do quite a lot without sharing the data, knowing that the aim is to share the data. Because then at some point, I mean, I, I have no other means of working than to download the data. And there, okay, then I need trust. So this is a bit of, um, my view of things based on on, on previous um, participations uh, in in projects, but but can be a way to to move uh, uh, through.